So it's a little bit late, but I am going to finally be doing my final reviews for the last two books that I read up, read on my um, catching up month of reading. So those two books um, are catching up on the French books that I'm reading, and I will just say this quickly because <laughs> I didn't, don't think I quite realised this the last time. But when I say French book, they're both translated from French. Um, however, they're not both from France. The, one of the books is from France, the other is from Quebec in Canada. Um, but they both happen to be written in French, probably in different kinds of French. Um, however, the translations are, of course, from that language. So let's start with um, the first book, which is The Boy Who Belonged to the Sea by Denis Theriol. Now, this book is quite an intriguing book and one that was a little bit different to what I was kind of expecting it to be. It was a lot more emotional than I was expecting it to be. Um, and there was a lot more sort of um, drama, I guess, that I was expecting. I thought it was going to be like a sort of gentle read, and it was gentle in some respects, but there was just a lot of um, darkness to it also. This book is set in Quebec, where it is written, and it follows these two boys as they kind of bond together in their childhood, and they use their imagination to sort of reconcile the hard truths that are going on in their lives. It's very interesting and it is based around this notion of the sea, particularly one of the boys believes that his mum is belonging to the sea like a sort of mermaid creature and that he needs to get her back from the ocean. It has this sort of layer to it which is almost fantastical and it's this sort of crossover of the imagination to the reality. In a way it also has some sort of religious undertones to it, which is very interesting to think of this sort of new new development of religion through these childhood practices. And it also begins to like blur the line or show how the lines can be blurred from what you sort of make up and how that can then seep into what you actually then truly believe and enact in your day-to-day -day life. Um, that side of it was was really interesting and the way that it was contrasted with the actual events that were happening on happening in these characters' lives um, made it that much more poignant and that much more powerful. I will say, however, that there was a little bit too much going on in quite a small book, so at times there were moments where things jumped and there was the first storyline or the first sort of narrative kind of took you up until like the halfway point in the book and that was very, like a big focus of the book up until then and then it kind of stopped and it moved on to a different storyline um, and it kind of just seemed a little bit convenient that the first storyline was wrapped up so easily. I mean I understand the reason why it was wrapped up so easily because it, it really is part of this whole um, atmosphere but also the style of the story that's being told it just felt a little bit like, oh, come on, like, there must be there must be something more coming out of this, um, or there must be a, a greater reason for this. I liked the way that the um, characters developed their relationships throughout this book, and there were different kinds of relationships showing at different moments, and this the, the concept of like the family in this book um, is explored quite nicely. Um, there was a kind of a t plot twist towards the end, which I think was a little bit too melodramatic. It kind of felt a little bit more like a, something you would see in a, a soap opera or something, but it kind of fitted in with the story as a whole. Um, I think I gave this book uh, 3.5 stars. Um, it was either 3 or 3.5 stars, but it was like around that. It was really enjoyable and really readable actually at the same time. It was um, written nicely that you could just kind of fall into the world quite easily and you could stay with it um, quite easily as the story progressed. There was nothing that was odd or a little bit sort of jarring about the writing style. It was just, for me personally, the sort of plot was a little bit too dramatic and I was just a bit like I wanted something a little bit more calm, a little bit more peaceful. I'm intrigued to read more books from him because he has a book called The Peculiar Life of a, a Lonely Postman, I think. Yeah, that's the one. And I, could, I, I can imagine that, because this is his first book, I think, so I can imagine that his um, skill would have developed, so I'd be intrigued to see if I do enjoy that one more or less and why, etc, and if he has actually grown as a writer since writing this one. Um, but yeah, I, w I would recommend it to, to a f quite a few people. I think it's very, it's one of those books that um, can be enjoyed by many. It's not too, like, different or too 
niche. It has it has something for everyone. Um, and it has a lot of drama, obviously. <laughs> and then the next book that I read was The Office of Gardens and Ponds by Didier de Coin. Now, this book is French, but it's um, set in Japan, like a historic Japan. I think about um, 900 AD, something like that, maybe a little bit later. Now, this book in itself follows a woman whose husband has just died. Her husband was a sort of fisherman for carp and he would keep the carp and he would sort of raise them from the river that they lived nearby and then every now and then he would take them to the imperial city where he would where he would release the carp into some of the um sort of the imperial monastery ponds and things like that so the office of garden ponds is the sort of the office that hires him to do this job and um and it's a very it's a, like a big deal for the village that he comes from. So once he dies, his wife then has to fulfill the, the final order, which he, her husband isn't able to do. So the book follows her as she goes to the Imperial City with these carp and um, to, to deliver them, to fulfill the um, order and the request. Um, and it's, so it, it has this sort of sense of, it's very Japanese sort of, piety towards your um your yourself and your family name and but also your like your village um because it's like a peasant village and the the way that they sort of deliver these carp to the imperial city is the sort of the the thing that actually helps the entire village to, to survive a year so it is of great importance for the woman to kind of deliver these carp and i think that kind of raises the stakes in this book and makes it quite um it, well, it keeps the intrigue going, I guess, for the reader to, to follow this journey with her. The plot then kind of goes in a few different ways than I was totally expecting to. It develops in this way that kind of takes you into a place you might not have imagined it have going. And there was one point where I was wondering whether it was going to kind of end up being a bit like um, Perfume, the story of murder, because there's this whole kind of sequence of events happening based around the sense of smell. And so these things, I was like, oh, so this was totally unexpected. And I think it was very interesting. It was a bit disconcerting at first because I think you're very much lulled into this sense of where the story is going to go and how the story is going to turn out. And then it doesn't. It kind of debunks your sort of expectations. And it that is intriguing, but it's a bit like, well, this is a little bit far out from what seemed feasible. It, it made sense, I guess, in the context once you got there. It was just... It happened two, two or three times towards the end where things just went in a completely different direction. I was like, wow, I definitely wasn't expecting that. It's um, a historical fiction book, and I seldom read, like, proper historical fiction books, I guess. Like, contemporary historical fiction, as in books that are written now about the olden days. Didier de Coin spent about 14 years researching this book, and you can really tell because there's so much, like, fine detail in the telling. There are a few footnotes even, which I, which I sometimes appreciate, although sometimes in this book they were a little bit obvious footnotes. But I do think that there was like one or two moments, or maybe a few more moments, but there were a few moments where um, the author kind of then got a little bit too caught up on the details, so like thing he would have to explain things which didn't really, you didn't really need explained to you, or it focused too heavily on the detail to make you know that it was going to be really accurate as opposed to like having that detail fitting into the story. Um, I will say that it took me a while to kind of get used to that like level of detail. So I, at first, when it first started happening, I was a bit like rolling my eyes, like, oh, do I really need to know that? Why can't he just get on with the story? But I think I fell into that sort of style quite quickly on. And actually that I then began to appreciate it because it made it feel so much more realistic and it made it feel very, like like I was actually in the world and a part of the world and exploring the world with um, the main character because of course she had never left her village before. I gave this book a four stars and I think I I really did enjoy that and it was one of those books that actually it might have been a little bit more of a slower read but it, you were completely absorbed in it for the whole time and I, I kind of went through it quite um, quickly. Well, yeah, I say it's a slow read but I went through it quite quickly but it, it feels like it's a slow read, but you can actually really savour it and get through it um, quite voraciously. And it, it was really enjoyable in that respect. I think it was just where things kind of went a little bit 
like completely different to what I was expecting it to. That definitely took me by surprise. And there were there were some moments where I was like, but really, is that really what's going to happen here? But um, but I did overall really enjoy it. And I I think again, this is the sort of book that if you enjoy historical fiction, you will definitely enjoy this book. But I think my biggest problem with it was that there was a lot of focus on sex, which just didn't feel wholly necessary, and it kind of just felt like yeah, that was just what was on the author's mind at the time, and it, it it kind of it became like a big overarching theme of the of the book, which was a bit odd, and then it kind of the ending was really really odd, <laughs> and definitely not what it kind of the ending kind of ended up in this more sort of is this moment real or is this moment not real sort of moment, and you kind of it I guess that kind of speaks to this book, it has that similar where things seem a little bit mythical um, but there you can't tell whether it's because the characters have made themselves believe it or not. Um, so, it, so it was an odd ending but I kind of now can't imagine the book ending in any other way. So the two books together, it's interesting that they've both been translated from the same language, obviously they come from different countries um, and obviously I think they, they it does demonstrate how how rich storytelling can be and that, you know, just because they share a language they don't necessarily share anything else. Um, I think sometimes I've had this like notion of what French literature could could be like or is like um, from some of the books that I have read previously, um, but also I think, and I, I guess also I tend to, when I think of French literature I think of it more as like the French art through like the French cinema and the French fashion and everything and it's more like this sort of couture, high, high art sort of um, literature and writing but these books kind of like debunk that. I guess this one in some way is a little bit more artsy but more in the fact that it's just so richly detailed and it's almost like a, um, a silk embroidered kimono of a book if that makes any sense whereas this one feels a lot more down to earth and a lot more kind of it does have those elements that I guess I would perhaps typically apply to my concept of what French literature could be like, but it was a lot more grounded and a lot more human, a lot more real, and and I think I kind of feel like that's probably why this one has more appeal to more people, because it is, it doesn't feel pretentious in any way, it doesn't feel um, sort of a little bit out there or above or anything else, it feels just very much like it could be a part of anybody's bookshelf, if that makes sense. You can you can see very loose links here and there, but actually, and I think, you know, of course the translation does then alter, also alter the text, because in this book, not only does the translator have to translate it from the French, but I guess the translator also needs to know the context of the, um, of the book and the writing of it, because of course there's also Japanese words, and you're like, well, is the translator going to be translating all the Japanese words? Which words are they going to keep in Japanese and then just add a footnote at the bottom? Were the footnotes in the original language um, book or were they ones that were just in the translation, etc.? Um, and with this book, I think also that you're not only just translating the language, but you're also translating the cultures that it sort of it brings to life and you're translating how these cultures then affect mindsets and things and why characters are doing something and how the characters are impacted by the place that they're living in. And so of course you're going to get two very very different books but there was something soothing about them both which which I just really enjoyed and kind of were, was a nice way to end the month. So yes that's my reviews of those two books and I'm definitely intrigued to kind of get into some more French translated books, particularly some more Quebecois books because um, I do obviously really enjoy um, Xavier Dolan's films and he he's from Quebec and his films are very much of that sort of place and of that sort of mindset um, and, and yeah I kind of want to explore more of that literature. So anyway, I'm soon going to be getting up another video of what I'm going to be reading in July, um, and I'll see you then for that one. Bye bye!